So, uh, good afternoon, everybody, um, and welcome to our joint bioengineering seminar series. Um, today, uh, we have a very exciting presentation uh, by the faculty uh, from UWM for Mechanical Engineering, Dr. Um, Mohammed Habib Rahman. Uh, Dr. Rahman received his uh, first degree in, uh, from Kulna University of Engineering and Technology in Bangladesh. And then he went to Japan to get his master's in biorobotics. Later, he moved to Canada and did his PhD in engineering uh, from, uh, re and received his degree from University of Quebec. And from 2012 to 2014, uh, Dr. Rahman worked as a postdoctoral research fellow in biorobotics at University uh, at McGill University, and in 2014 um, he joined. Uh, in 2015 he joined um, our faculty in College of Engineering. So today, um, uh, Dr. Rahman will be presenting a very interesting topic on um, robotic exoskeleton for rehabilitation and motion assist. <clears throat> so design, development, and control. And uh, without further ado, I would like you to give a very big welcome to uh, Dr. Rahman and enjoy the presentation. Thank you and good afternoon everybody. So we'll present uh, today my research on rehabilitation robotics. So uh, I will present my research and you know, I will show some you know, difficulties that we have faced and how we have overcome these things. And that will be helpful for you to learn if you want to go in, the, in this direction of research. So that's why the topic is today is design, development and control. I will focus in these three areas of you know, exoskeleton robot. Uh, the research now going in my lab, there are a couple of branches we are now working on wearable robotic device and also we are working on the you know, now robot to educate or to interact with the people to make it more intelligent. We also we work on the mobile robotics uh, so that uh, two robots can work together to do a particular task. Uh, today I will focus only on exoskeleton robot and you know, its design and development and, uh, and control uh, you know, schemes. Uh, the presentation will organize this uh, way. First, I will discuss some motivation. I mean, this is uh, true for all research that why you want to go in these directions. We'll show some numbers and some, you know, fact that help us to motivate to go in these directions. And I will focus a little bit on the existing exoskeleton device or, you know, end effect of device for rehabilitations. Some state of the arts of the present research on this area. And uh, now for next step, I will discuss some things on design consideration. If you want to make some exoskeleton robot or end effect of robot, what are the design consideration if I want to use it for the humans? And next some research challenge and the control <coughs> and some experiments. These are where I will present these things today. So the major motivation of research is the disability, to handle the disability. Uh, it seems that number of disabled people keeps increasing day by day. I mean, there are a number of you know, factors uh, that uh, you know, uh, consider to add for the disability. That's the elderly, people are you know, aging day by day. And there are a few others, you know, diseases like strokes, cardiovascular disease, trauma, sports injury. These are one of the major you know, cause of disability. Uh, I will focus today on elderly and strokes. These two you know, key points, uh, then we'll see the numbers that help us to motivate uh, in this direction. Uh, this is the statistics of world population right now. I mean, current. We can see the senior citizens now is like over 483 millions, and it is projected to rise about over 974 million by 2030. And this is the statistics of some G8 nation. You can see, you know, the percentage of elderly people keeps increasing day by day. In US, is now 13.1 percent of total populations. Uh, it is projected that um, by 2050 it will go up to like two, two, two 20 percent. This is good sign, you know, because the light expect life expectancy is increasing due to the advancement of knowledge of science and medication and other things. But uh, on the other hand, you know, we are we have some uh, you know disabled people increasing day by day. So how to handle this issue? This is another issue. Okay. 
Now, if you think about this stroke, then other you know key factors of disability. This is the statistics. Uh, we can see you know globally 50 million people affected with this stroke. Okay, anytime. In each year, in addition, 17 million people affected with the strokes. In America, it's like over 800,000 Americans suffer a stroke each year. 85 percent stroke patient incur arm impairment. 40 percent victims are chronically impaired. These are the numbers you can see, and this numbers is increasing day by day. But you know, we have uh, always shortage of doctor and other things. So this is a large number of population need to handle, and if we see the you know, economic burden for this and global burden is 863 billion dollars and USA is like 65.5 billion dollar annually. So, it means the statics I showed just a few minutes ago that is increasing day by day. Number of elderly people increasing, stroke affected people increasing, uh, that is the reasons you know we are not we are actually shortage of doctors, physiotherapists and other things. So, we need additional support to help these disabled peoples and the treatment for this kind of disabled people needs you know manipulative physiotherapy from highly skilled medical personnel and also need in you know, a person to person caring and other thing the treatment duration is really long sometimes it takes you know more than a year or you know two years so like this. So, these are the major motivations and we thought if we can make a robot so that they can assist you know uh, with the doctors uh, assist the physical disabled people it will be a great advancement. And that is why we you know drive in this direction for research, we developed the exoskeleton type robot, uh, we are still you know designing the you know commercial pre prototype, uh, this is the experimental versions. Uh, my one undergraduate student working on the hand rehabilitation robot, another group is also working on the ag leg exoskeleton robot. So, these are the three areas uh, we are all working right now. Uh, now, I will discuss little bit on the type of you know rehabilitation device exist for the upper limb you know exoskeleton robot or in defect of robot. This is the in defect of robot, the definition is simple. In case of in defect of robot, uh, the robot will not be wired, it's some part of the hand or you know arm or will be connected with the robot, uh, it will be just in front of the subject, so they can move the arms. On contrary to this exoskeleton type robot, you can see from here, I mean it will be wired like a shard from the lateral side of the you know limb. In case of leg exoskeleton robot, it will be wired on the lateral side. So, it is kind of different between two of these and both has some advantage and disadvantage, we will discuss it you know in a probably next few slides. Uh, uh, if you can see for you know exoskeleton type, so it can move every joint separately, this is good things. Uh, other compli uh, complicated thing is hard to control. On the other hand, end affected type it just grab the hand, so it can move these things, but if I ask to go for the individual joint movement this and that, it is difficult for this kind of robot. Uh, so, now I will show some you know previous research on this area and you will see some differences in each uh, researchers or in research universities result outcomes. Gentle as project, this has a 3 degree of freedom robots. Okay. So, human hand has a 7 degree of freedom. So, it can go like up and down, so shoulder joint has 3 degree of freedom, elbow and forearm has 2 degree of freedom, wrist has 2 degree of freedom more, so 7 degree of freedom. So, uh, this is 3 degree of freedom and this is the able robot is like 4 degree of freedom, this is only for hand and MIT manage has a 5 degree of freedom. So, just uh, it is clear right now that if I want to give physiotherapy to whole arm, then we need more degree of freedom, this is the one things. And other thing the range of motions you can see. For example, one robot was in exist and it has a limited range of motion. My hand can go from here to here 180 degree. So, if robots some robot can go 1 to 90 degree, so it is not good for me to give the rehabilitation therapy. So, this, these are the you know, fundamental things degree of freedom and the range of motions. Some robots <coughs> built with the cable, you can see there is a cable here. So, cable system what happened? it gives some you know jerking or compliance extra compliance something is not really good for the you know patients with the disability. So, it always feels some kind of vibrations and uh, in the kind of you know stroke affected patient they always have sudden contractions or you know sometimes they are flaccid muscles. So, these are the two different scenarios. So, uh, this cable transmission system is always not working good. Lack of proper safety features. Uh, 
most important fact here, you know, since this is the device will be used for the human, if there is no proper safety features, then it, it will be hard to convince the patient and the physiotherapy that you can use these things. So, and even if it's the, you know, wire by the, you know, it's lateral side of the arm. So, if there is something happen, it will break the arm, right? So, for example, it's 120 degrees the range of motions and the robots goes more. That will be, you know, disaster. So, safety is the paramount issue. Some robots are really heavy. This is the pneumatic, you know, a, a pneumatic type exoskeleton robot and this is, look, you can see the architectures here. And if it's like a really big machines like robot, it's also hard to uh, convince the patients and the physiotherapists and the clinicians, you know, this robot is good to use. So, these are the couple of things and if you think the structure is heavy, then we need a really huge motors, large size of motors and to operate this kind of motor, we need a huge power. So, these are everything related to each other. So, for the design, everything should be light in weight just so that we can choose the right motors and other things. So, design consideration. Now, I will say the, these are the kind of limitations, the few limitations I sought out and now we will figure it out what will be the you know, design consideration, less degree of freedom and range of motions. So, when we will design a robot uh, for human upper or lower limb or the hand, then we have to first consider what are the degree of freedom exists for the human and the range of motions. So, then robot should be designed in such a way that it covers all the degree of freedom and covers all the range of motions, okay. Otherwise, it will be, you know, helpful for a particular group of patients, okay. These are the key things. Measures, uh, factor considered selecting the mobile, mobile range is safety of the robots and the movement record. As I said, you know, if you can uh, see some data of a typical adult or typical kid, uh, some, it is it's not necessary that everybody has the same range of motions and degree of freedom. So, provision should be included in the design so that you can adjust the, you know, safety limit. Uh, uh, some has really 145, some has 140. For the elbow is the same thing, is 120 degree. For some patients, some is 125 degree. So, provision should be added so that you can, you know, easily adjust the safety limits in the software and the hardware. Lightweight, as I said, is really important. Lightweight gives me, the device will be, looks really simple and nice then it will help you to choose the light motors and it will be helpful to easy to control because if it is the heavy things, if you move this thing, there is a huge inertia. So, the, when we will design this uh, kind of robot, then we have to think, okay, what are the materials we should use, okay, how to make it more light, uh, how to make it really, really nice to convince the physiotherapist and the clinicians as well. Uh, for the safety, you know, different level of safety should be added, uh, hardware constants, software constants, uh, limit switch. Uh, emergency suite, multiple safety features. If one thing is fall, then you know other can work. Accurate force feedback. This is the another approach because uh, this robot will be used for passive active assisted and active rehabilitation. So if there we should have some kind of force sensor or EMG sensors, if there is a not um, you know there is some delay with the force sensing or the feedback, the problem you know the patient will try to move the robot it will not help him to move other than it will just push it back. So, accurate force sensor feedback is really important so that it helps uh, the patients for motion acid as well as for rehabilitation, active rehabilitations. Wiring comfort, uh, ergonomic issue is there because this robot will be used for long times in a session like 90 minutes or 30 minutes or more than this. So, Wiring comfort is essential, uh, ergonomic design is also essential, otherwise it will not be comfortable for the patients. Complexity, you know, it's a, it's a simple thing. Sometimes we need to uh, do some assumptions because as I, I said, shoulder joint has a 3 degree of freedom. It has 2 degree of freedom more, we can go up, little bit is called, is called elevation and depression. So, when we will design uh, a mechanical device, we make it more simple so that, you know, it, it, is, it can work, it can serve the purpose, but not make it too complex. If you make a too complex designs, I mean, it will need lot of parts, moving parts, and this is moving and it will hard to control as well, okay. So, we need to do some trade off here. Gravity force compensations. For exoskeleton type robot, uh, it wired the arm. So, if robot ex put extra weight to the human head, this is not acceptable, okay. For endovector type, it's outside it's, it, and it just hold the arm. So, we need to think about it. The robot should be actively compensate the gravity. 
when he wired the arms, robot should uh, compensate the gravity of the subjects, robot should compensate the gravity of the links and I mean this is really important. If, if you can think if, if robot is in this position and sometimes power is cut off, okay, then it may fall down right with the robot's arm, arm plus robot link it will be harmful. So, you need to think about this how to compensate this gravity. So, in brief these are the you know limitations we have to consider design and structure, joint mechanism, and actuator, actuator selector because actuation selection is another important issue. You can go with the huge uh, actuator that will give you like a, you know for example for this movement we need like 50 Newton meter torques and if you can pick a um, big motor it can give you 80 Newton meter torque it will serve the purpose. The problem is if you choose a large motor then it will give you extra weight and that means it will give you extra inertia and it will be hard to control. So, you need proper you know calculations what will be the joint torque for each joints required if there is a spasticity, what will be the joint torques required for each joints? If there is other non-linearities, we cannot you know, consider what will be the joint torques. Then we have to sum up these things. Then for each joints, we need to find the right motors. Okay, uh, we will not choose really high, big size, and we will not choose the you know smaller size because smaller size will not serve the purpose. Bigger size will make the size you know give the more additional weight, uh, and it will be expensive as well. Okay couple of things we need to consider safety features and active gravity compensations. So, active gravity compensation sometimes you know researchers using spring and the wire mechanism for example, if there is a power cut up in this position or that position. So, it can still hold that position or you know magnetic uh, break it says we can use these things. These are the hardware things. Control is the another issue really and control has you know dynamic people a subject is changing because uh, there is a lot of people here everybody's mass and weight is different. So, in the robot usually gives some command this is the mass and they calculate how much torque it needs and it drives the things and every patient is different. Some patient has big spasticity some patient ha has you know no spasticity some flaccid muscles some patient has jerking. So, the controller will deal these things. So, once you solve the harder issue then the task will be the controller. So, these are the issue we will solve and I will discuss little bit that we have implemented couple of control techniques and why we have used these things. Okay. Uh, this is the CAD drawing of our robot that we have made. Uh, this is a 7 degree of freedom robot. So, we have a shoulder mechanism here 1, 2, 3 and this is the forearm curve and I will give you some I will show you some videos that you can sh uh, see it clearly. Okay. What we have addressed in our research that shoulder joint should have 3 degree of freedom. Uh, we have covered 140 degree for this motion, but it could be go a little bit more high 160 or 80 degree. Okay. And internal external rotation this is 85 to 75 degree this is the natural things. Uh, this is also horizontal flexion extension motion. We have something called hyper extension if you go a little bit back. But for the rehabilitation purpose, this is enough because, as I said, this is for the rehabilitation purpose. For forearm, we have two motions: elbow flexion extensions and forearm pronation supinations. So this robot has these two features. For wrist, we have two degree of freedom more. So we have a radial ulnar deviations and flexion extensions. So these are the typical range of motions. So other than the sh you know, only shoulder. 180 degree or 170 degree we keep it in 140 degree uh, this is for make the design simple. But as I said you know when you think about the commercial prototype things so you have to think about you know all range of user can use all degree of freedom uh, you make have to make sure the range of motion and degree of freedom is there. So, this is the CAD ring the dotted line shows here we have some adjustable mechanism here for accommodate wide range of users. So, uh, because uh, shoulder to elbow joints. So, we need to adjust this thing depend on the size. So, there is a simple mechanism uh, just uh, you know unscrew one bolt and just move it up and down. Here is the same things uh, we have a sliding mechanism. So, that we can from elbow to wrist we can adjust the length between subject to subjects and here is also the same from wrist to hand size we can adjust these things. Uh, dynamic modeling. Uh, we have used Newton Euler method because dynamic modeling has a mass parameter and you can see that 
the robot has a mass and human has a mass. So we need to consider these things, uh, mass and inertial properties. Uh, there is a software here, it's really easy to do these things. Once the patient is really here, the vital statics of how much the weight and the height. If you give the height and weight, then in the program will automatically load the mass and inertia properties for this patient. So this is really good. One way to do these things. And another way I, I will discuss um, in the control sections, we have used typical adult mass and the controller was designed in such a way it can accommodate wide range of users. Okay. That has a learning in algorithm inside the controller. So it can automatically adjust the parameters. These are the control techniques. Some is really simple PID, proportional integral derivative control. Whereas the control background, you know, this we, in PID we do not use any mass and inertial properties. Okay. And it is also working really fine. In the computer torque control techniques, we use the patient's mass. But this is the ideal control techniques. Uh, if there is a non-linearity, for example, sudden jerking or you know um, center of gravity change or there is a little friction comes, this controller is not working good. On the other hand, sliding mode control technique is a non-linear control technique, it is really robust. Uh, but the problem of the traditional sliding mode control technique, it has little jerking because it has a chattering functions. So we modify with the exponential reaching law, so it has a smooth tracking. I will show some results with these control techniques. And also we have used the virtual decomposition control techniques, different control techniques. The purpose is the simple, in the PID we do not need patient mass, mass and inertial properties. So uh, for simple movement like elbow and forearm, we really do not need to go with this control technique. If we use the seven joints movements all together, then probably we need the non-linear control techniques. There is a drop up menu, so we can just select the control techniques we use, we want to use. And it is really easy to, I mean, for us. Virtual decomposition control technique is good for the reasons, as I said, we do not need to change the mass and inertial property every time. It has a, you know, mechanism, control, uh, you know, updating mechanism. So it updates the uh, inertial properties and mass automatically based on the error. If we run the robot two times and if you say the error is big, error means the, we are giving the command to the robot, this follow this trajectory. I will show the examples. And if the error is big, so it will update automatically the mass and inertial properties. So again, the research challenge in any of these control techniques will be the dynamic trajectory tracking. Okay, this is the schematic uh, of the control. I mean, uh, I will show, give a brief introduction here. We can see in the bottom theta d is the desired trajectory. So if I want to move the robot, I, I'm, I have to give some commands. Okay. Uh, just move the elbow. So we have to give a command, the elbow trajectory or the move internal and external rotations, I have to give a command there. And in the control architecture, you can see uh, we have a mass properties is here, V is the velocity and centrifugal terms and G is the gravity terms. This is comes from the dynamic modeling of a robots. So in any mechanical system, so we always do a dynamic modeling. So this is simple things. For human arm, it's a manipulator, serial manipulators, it's the same like a robots, okay. So we just make it to double these things. Uh, in, in short, this is the control architecture. So uh, uh, in my research, we have covered three types of exercise, passive, active and active assisted exercise. In case of passive, uh, patient remains passive, he does not do anything. So there is a bunch of library of exercise, elbow movement, forearm movement, elbow or forearm movement or internal external rotations or combination of this. So we give a exercise from this pool and controller work on this exercise and that gives the joint trust to the robot so the robot can move. This is the one way to do. In active rehabilitation exercise, there is a force sensors and EMG sensors. Force is on the uh, handle of the robots and EMG we put sensor on the muscles. So you can see there is an EMG based controller and the force sensor based controller. How it works? Uh, it depends on the patients. If the patient EMG signal is really good, then robot will take the signals from the muscles and uh, it will give the uh, controller that, okay, let's uh, work with the EMG based control because his EMG signal is good. Then it will give the joint truck to the motors, the motor will, motor will move according to the EMG signals. EMG signals actually give us the true reflections, the, um, the motions of human, okay because each muscle is responsible for each movement. So if I want to move this direction, it means my biceps is working and uh, there is a triceps here. Okay. If I want to move this direction, this is the deltoid, this is working with me. Because the movement of the body is with the mus uh, 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 skeletal muscles. Okay. 
because this is the give us the energy to move these things. Okay, so it means uh, we have to analyze the muscle signals. There is a you know this is a long uh, you know programming thing. So we are using neurophysi controller. So we have a mapping of all these areas. So we move with different grid and work with the you know lots of subjects and make the control with neurophysi control. So now if the EMG we can go there, it can know that which area you are. Okay. And other thing, EMG is the you know highly nonlinear. Each person e, person EMG is different. And again, uh, for my in my case, for the, each session EMG will be different. Okay, so that is a you know a learning algorithm in the, that there. So if you want to work with the EMG based control, you have to think about it how to make it more efficient. Okay. If EMG signal is not good, for example, some patients doesn't have a really good EMG signal. Like we have the force sensor signal in the wrist on the wrist. So the robot will move based on the force sensor signal. Uh, this is the simple architecture of the control techniques. So, we are using national instrument device. Uh, why will we use these things? Because uh, we have to know that we are using non-linear control techniques. We need a high sampling rate. And so then we can give, have to give the models in the you know high sampling rate. We have run like one millisecond here, uh, the main control loop. And inside the main control loop, we have a another control loop that gives constant motor torque is like 50 microseconds. So, these are the two you know technical things. Uh, uh, that is why we are using national instrument PXI and there has the FPGA there. So, this is really fast enough for us for this kind of applications. I will now show some exercise that we have uh, done these things. So, uh, in the in my systems the you know, subject remains seated when we give the exercise. Uh, we will show some single joint and multi joint movement exercise for passive, active, and active movements. Again, for the passive, there is a uh, you have a pulse of you know library, so we have to take the exercise from there, send it to the robot, and robot can move in these directions. For active and active assisted, we will use the EMG sensor signals and the force sensor signals. Uh, this is the user interface with the lab view. Okay. So you can see, we can I can select just it's a drop down menu. We can select the controller which controller you want to use. Uh, this is just the experimental purpose. You can see you know which controller performance is good or bad. Okay. And when you click this start button, then the you know pop up window comes that which exercise we want to give. And typical exercise is like this way. If you want to go to the physiotherapy, so he will move the hand. He will use his two hand then move the hand slowly like this. And one, two, three, they have count like this. Okay. Sometimes slowly, sometimes fast, depend on the patient's impairment. And then we have implemented this ex experiments with our robots with two different subjects. Okay, so you can see two different subjects, and this is the same exercise: shoulder joint vertical flexion extension motions. And you can see that two patient has a different mass: 65 kilogram and 72. Height is different. And if you see the controller output here, uh, the red dotted line here is the reference trajectory that this is the way to move okay and the blue lines give us the major trajectory after the experiments we get this from the robots and tracking error you can find it's almost like you know negligible really 0.5 degree error for the rehabilitation purpose error is not a big issues because we are just giving the motions okay but if you want to publish some papers with the control techniques or engineering point of view this is really important that how the robot is performed for our industrial robot, what happened? You know, uh, for example, if I give the, some task to do the painting, so we always give some distance. Okay, the robot have to go some points and then do the painting. So if the error is large, it cannot paint. Okay, so industrial purpose precision is really really important. For rehabilitation purpose, 0.5 degree error is nothing. Okay, now let's see the different videos, and this is probably for elbow. This is the elbow joint flexion extension motions. Uh, and again, you can see the error here. The controller performance is really nice. And we can al always play with the velocity also because when at the earliest stage, you can go with the really slow velocity, then you can increase the velocity. So the program is designed in such a way we can just choose the velocity profile and other things so that it can help physiotherapists to you know choose the right exercise for the patients. So shoulder and internal external rotations is such really slow just to show because we are using the harmonic drive, so it can go from really slow to really fast. Okay. This 
this is elbow and forearm together. So now we are moving two joints. The that's the why the robot is good, you know, because you can you know ask him to do any task. So now we are elbow then international rotation. You can choose the cycle. Okay, okay, go for that thirty minute sessions. So it's not a fatigue for, because for there will no need a human to be there. Okay, physiotherapist or no friend or clinicians. So you can put the cycle there. So you can go thirty minutes. You can put okay these two joints work together. We have now is L1 forearm working together, and you can make you know combination of two or three joints. This is the diagonal reaching movement. Now it's a combination of four joints. So now we are going this direction. So you can see. So it means you know you can program like your way, depends on the subject impairment. So it can give you the exercise. In the rehabilitation purpose, it's really important we go for repetitive exercise and longer period of time. Okay. So you can program these things. Okay, 30 minutes. Repetitive means you can change the cycles. Okay. You know, fast, slow, and other things. Same exercise I will show with the fast movement. You can see, same things. Okay. The previous one it takes like 2.8 seconds. So you can make it half 1.4 seconds. Even the controller performance is really good. You can see here uh, that Cartesian trajectory it was. Cartesian means end defector. The tracking error is less than one two centimeters. Now, simultaneous movement of all joints. So. So in case of typical rehabilitation exercise, uh, physician or doctor give us some functional task, but it is hard to accommodate like seven joints together. So in robots, we have we can make it. Okay, we have program like this. Uh, now you can have seen this thing that is moving seven joints together. So this is really important. So physicians always suggest that when we do the physiotherapy kinds of things, so involve all the muscles. So we have like seven joints. So we are involving. Seven joints together, so it means it's involving all the muscles. So you can repeat it, these things, or you can program, you know, whatever the patient needs. Uh, so th this is the why we uh, we are thinking the robot has a big features to help in this area. Uh, the results of seven joints together, you can even see that if we move the seven joints together, the tracking error you can see less than like 2.5 degree. So, in engineering point of view, if we use the multiple joints together, it means lot of inertia will become, error will become, uncertainty will become. So, controller is hard to handle these things. PID controller is not good enough because there is no mass and inertial properties there. But other non-linear control techniques, they have the mass and inertia properties there. So, if you move in any other directions, it always update the things. Okay. So, that is why we need uh, some good non-linear control technique. And top of this we need adaptive control technique, virtual decomposition control is the adaptive control technique. So if we change subject to subject, uh, that is not the big issue that based on the error, he will minimum update the parameters. Okay. Uh, also we have work on other things, teleoperation, we thought that okay, how that you know patient will be in some place and the physiotherapy will be some place apart, then how can we give the therapy. So, we thought like this way, you know, we made joysticks, okay, and we, we, we think how can we move the robot with the joystick. So, this is simple like elbow fuller play, flexion extension. So, it means, you know, your robot will be in one place, now, you know, therapist will be other place, so he can now drive the robot from there, okay. And we will make the robot intelligent with the force sensors, so he can get virtual feedback, okay, he is getting pain on other things. So, you know, you can speed the movement, you know, slow, because this is all in your hand. You can speed up this thing, slow this thing, random movement, you can change real time, okay. Let us go to the next things, then we will show another joints. So, this is the small things, but it has a seven joints together, okay. So, it is really nice, you can play here, okay. So, in future, it will be like this, you know, uh, I mean, if you want to serve many people uh, as a clinician or a therapist, so I will be on place and uh, I can serve in you know, many people sitting in one place. I don't need to go in different places. Uh, now, it's a little bit complex. We'll go elbow and forearm together with the same small things. Look, so we can even run two joints together, elbow and forearm. And this is small thing is nothing, you know, just the prototype of the you know big one. So whatever is done, it's just reflecting there. Okay. Diagonal reaching movement. So it means like four joints together. Okay. So this is just proof of concept that you know we can remotely operate this device. Uh, there is a big features. Uh, so now the things we need to make a commercial things prototypes. This exoskeleton robot, 
and to convince patients and the therapist okay, that you can use these things and to validate their study that okay, if we use the robot then it will be you know really efficient. So the second phase, second phase is that uh, we have just showed the passive things, now we will show the active rehabilitation things <coughs> and uh, it, it, research has done like this, you know, if we give some visual feedbacks uh, that improve the rehabilitation performance. So we make some kind of interface like this, okay, and this is even the passive giving some tasks, okay, go for a square shape movement or in a triangular shape movement, uh, the robot is moving these things, uh, this is still the passive. Uh, but he just know that what he is doing now. But this is the active things. There is a force sensor and we give him passenger task subject that okay follow this trajectory okay. So and the, what the robot is doing he is actively compensate the gravity and the subject is just pushing the robot to follow the curve okay. So when he is pushing the robot to follow this kind of curve this is the you know it is called the Cartesian trajectory tracking N D factor. So, if I move like this, it means you have multiple muscles movements here, not, not elbow and forearm. So, a physiotherapist always gives functional <coughs> tasks, okay, clean the tables or wash the wall or do something. So, if you ask him to draw something, you know, you can, you can, you can realize multiple muscle movement involved here. So, this is really good things here. And this is I will call active assisted exercise. I will explain first it what it, what it does. You can see that you know dot here. So we will give the robot a task, the patient a task, okay, go to this dot mark, okay. And in the path, if he fails to do this thing, then robot will help him to do this thing, he will push it, okay. Okay, let us see the video first. And you can see that he is now pushing. And now when he lift, uh, move, uh, release his hand, then robot is trying to push to the goal, okay. There is intelligence we add there that once the patient is active, the robot will be passive. Once patient cannot move, then robot will, you know, help him to go to the target, okay. So, it is kind of active assisted things. You can see when he release, then robot know the target and he try to push him there, okay. This part of the research with the EMG, you can see the sensor mounted on the arm. So, it is really easy, I mean with the EMG signals, I am just showing because if I wire this robot, you can see that I am moving these things. So, just if I want to move these things, we have EMG signals, it is coming from the muscles and it directly reflects the true intention of movement. So, it, according to the EMG signals, it helps us to move in different directions. And this control technique is really complicated because as I said EMG signal is different person to person, even for the EMG signal for each person is different from different sessions. So we have used the neurophysy control techniques, so we have mapped all the en envelopes with different grids, with different subjects, there is a learning algorithm is there, every time before the experiments we need to do some exercise to you know update the parameters, then it works really fine. So, okay. And this is the results I show you, if I can see that you can see from the results when biceps and triceps both are working, when this is working there is a one motion is there on the bottom side, when triceps is working that means that another degree of another side rotation is there. And the results of this you know EMG based experiment, the green line shows here the muscle activation, okay. And this figure show that when muscle activates the same motions, okay, uh, for to perform the same motion, we need more power when robot is not assisting us. And this is the experiment with the robots. You can see when robot assisting us with the same motions, we don't have similar pattern. It, it means robot is assisting. We don't need much more muscle power. So this is the experiment for motion assist. Who the person who is really disabled ha cannot move the arm in you know in efficient way. He can wire this robot, he will just try to move the robot, then muscle signal will amplify and it help with the patient to move the arm. So it means if we need to do some daily activities with the robots, it will really helpful. We not, do not need a lot of muscle powers uh, and this is ultimately kind of you know for elderly people, actually th those does not have an arm impairment, but they have the weak muscle structures, cannot do his own tasks and this kind of robot will help them as a motion assist device. 
Uh, now, we are working on two other things. So, make the you know task really complicated. Okay. We we'll want to make, we are making some kind of maze like this. So, every time you know in different therapeutic sessions, you will give a complex and complex task like active things. So, so move the robot. So, these are the game. Once you you know pass the one level, then we will give another things. I will go show you, we are also making this kind of game for VR, what you are reality environment. Giving the task, okay, go this point. If it go this point in the specified amount of time, you will get a score there, okay, just kind of motivations that you are doing good. So, it means to involve the patient actively to do some tasks, okay. So, this is really important. Once we, uh, we are good with the passive rehabilitation exercise, we have to engage the patient, okay, do some active rehabilitation exercise. We have to motivate the patients, okay, if, if we can involve this thing, this is what will happen. We will just kind of game environment, okay. So, uh, I have now one other group, I am working with another researchers here that with the EEG based control, okay. This is, will be a good challenge if we can solve these things. So, because uh, whatever we, we, we want to do is coming from the brain. So, now I am moving my hand uh, from the sensory cord, motex cortex. So, signal goes to the spinal cord and from the spinal cord it goes to the arm. It is emit the neurotransmitter to the muscle and then we can move. So, everything comes from the brain. So, now we are researching to analyze the you know motion pattern from the brain. So, if we can succeed that will be really, really good things. But we are really in the earliest days. We can just now you know, get the signal to make it on and off. But the uh, success will be if we can classify the signal even for the single motions, okay. From the brain, if we can even get a single motion, for example, one motion or two motions, okay, that will be real success. We are really working on this area right now. Uh, that's all my presentation. So, if you have any questions. Yes. Um, so, you have the intention of using this in patient rehab? Yes. How, are, how do you want to then progress into making this product that saves on the cost that's usually a barrier to conventional therapy? Uh, and I think about, you know, because if you go to the theory of physiotherapy, you are uh, asking for the cost, right? Uh, because this cost like around 40,000 like this, okay. But, you know, this is like experimental device. Commercial device will be not like this. We have used, uh, you know, very, you know, precise and very sophisticated motors because this is not, not, not just for, you know, experiment. We have to publish paper, to convince the people, get the grant. So, the uh, one motor cost like, you know, with the harmonic drive like, uh, you know, 800 plus 2 plus 1200 dollar each motors. But the commercial prototype, if you use this stepper motor, it will be like 100 dollars, okay. Uh, this is the things we have made with the aluminum, okay, and in our lab. So, we have to buy these things, go to the fabrication shop, give in the payment. But think about the commercial things, it will be everything will be carbon fiber, okay. It is really, really light carbon fiber. If you make a bulk product, it will be cheap. Other thing, the industrial PC we have used, as I said, NIPXI is cost 12,000 dollar, okay. But we do not need this kind of things, you know, if the 500 dollar we have, you know, lot of things we, the, the RDO is not good enough, for, we have a lot of portable uh, computational device or compact trio we have in the national space like 2000 dollars. We can do the trade of these things and the good part is if you stay in the hospitals and it can work 24 7, so okay. And if we can succeed that it can give the teleoperation, so anybody can do these things. And the other things I showed a little bit on hand rehabilitation device, we want to make this to send it to home. So, that is it will be really, we will make with the 3D printing facilities, we will using low cost, you know, computational things, RDO, no? so it will be really inexpensive. Uh, think about, you know, going to the doctors uh, and there is a lot of bills involved, but if we, this can serve, you know, multiple patients uh, for longer period of time, uh, key thing is repetitive therapy for longer period, okay. So, it is really fatigue for the physiotherapist to go half an hour do the same things, it is really boring, okay. But the robot can do really, you know, efficient way. Even you can in involve like multiple, you know, muscles, multiple degree of freedom, this is really hard sometimes, okay. Any questions, yeah. <coughs> Have you ever thought of incorporating like, a, like an Oculus or like a 3D? So yeah, I have one group working on these things, okay. He is working on virtual reality environment. Uh, he is uh, working, he is I mean, he's from the computer science department, okay. And he is thinking about these things that how can we use the Oculus things, okay. 
virtual reality environment. This is a big project, you know, this is not like just, you know, I have done in a year, uh, hardware control and different control techniques, then game interface development, it takes time, okay. And now we are working, you know, make the robot really intelligent. We have three, four different groups working. One is making the hardware that looks like really we can customer, you know, make it appealing for sellings. Other group is working, make it more intelligent. How it, it intelligence? Uh, when you go to the physiotherapy, what he what he do? He will just hold your hand. He will say, okay, are you getting pain? Okay, let's do more elbow movement. Or if you not get pain, then okay, make it more fast. Now we want to make robot like intelligent. We have all the sensor will be in it. He will talk with the patients. Okay, other than making my own programs. Okay elbow 90 degree or elbow, then robot will talk with the patients, we have the pain sensor there, he will monitor the EMG, when he will grab these things, he will talk and he will okay, learn, okay, and, uh, he, he will intelligently choose the therapeutic exercise. And the same thing, VR is really important to motivate the patients, okay. Yes. Uh, yes, definitely, because you know, as I said, we are always recording all the things. Measurements, bio recording is like a EMG signals monitoring, okay. And the good way to know the how the patient progress is to see the patient that he is doing the task, okay. And other thing, biological, we always measure the EMG levels, okay, during the experiments. So, is it possible to cheat in uh, things like that, the thing is in the shoulder uh, that robot we have eliminated the shoulder joint mechanism the elevation and depressions but in our mom for my case when i did my master's thesis i designed the shoulder joint seven degree of freedom as i said this is we added two more things we complex uh, we, we just you know remove that part but we have the shoulder joint center rotation mechanism, so you don't need to move to compensate. Okay, this is the mechanism already exists in our research. For this robot, we didn't incorporate these things, and and biological data we will always get. And and the good way to you know biological data is not true. The good way to know that patient is doing good or bad is to see the performance. Okay, let's do this task. If he cannot grab these things by hand, so I mean you can see the physically. Okay, how the patient is doing well. And other things, I have discussed with another professor, say, he said, uh, without the measurements and any biological signal, how can you know the patient is doing good? This is the simple things he asked me, okay. And I do some brainstorming, he said, okay, it's really simple. If he cannot eat today and if he can eat tomorrow, that's the things he can move his hand. So you can easily see these things, okay, uh, other than comparing the biological uh, and data measurement. One thing also he told me like this, okay. Uh, for example, his patient is now lying on the bed you are using the smart phone and other things and you always track his position. If you see that he is sometimes in the living room and sometimes in the washroom and sometimes in the kitchen, now you see his performance, right? Because you know the location, he is now moving, okay. This is the couple of index we can easily measure. If you said I am not going goal, but we can, I can see that he is moving in a different way, okay. Yes. Assisted, the active assisted device, where they were tracking pattern. I was seeing the people we were testing, they weren't able to like even follow the pattern as it was. Is that a function of the machine, or like when if you have a patient on there who's going to come from a curvy, how will you know? That's what the machines. So, like, they will, like, will they ever be able to follow that path directly? Like, how will you, how will you be able to see the things is, you know, uh, that that if you do active exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, because we give the task to follow the trajectory, okay. It's really easy for us, uh, I mean, for the paper to draw these things, uh, but when, we, because this is the control things, and when we design the controller, I'm giving the task, and it, he is getting hard time. This is the healthy subjects, okay, yeah. to point it there, by visually things. And maybe we have to design the controller in good way, so that it can truly reflect the torque. What is there, if you're giving the force there, it goes to the joint torques. And if your controller is not designed in a good way, then you will see kind of track these things, okay. Any other questions?
very much for interesting presentation and